So it's an absolute pleasure to be with the winner of the Production and Operations Management category at the Case Centre Awards and Competitions 2022. Fraser Johnson is joining us today. Uh, he's the Leanders Supply Chain Management Association Chair at Ivy Business School. And we're going to be talking about Fraser's winning case, Apple Inc. Global Supply Chain Management. Uh, this is Fraser's second time of winning this category with a case on Apple. Uh, so I'm looking forward to a really insightful conversation as he takes us behind the scenes of the writing process um, and explains uh, further just how he got to write the case and how well it's playing in classrooms around the world. Many congratulations, Fraser. It's a really well-deserved second win. Perhaps I could start by asking you to um, set the scene for us by telling us a little bit about what the case is about and who is the protagonist. Students are familiar with Apple, obviously, uh, which is always a great uh, attribute when you teach the case because everybody's familiar with the company. It's by market capitalization, the biggest company in the world. Uh, but very few people really understand why Apple's been so successful in terms of being able to develop, uh, produce and sell and distribute uh, it's iPhone products, and the case really takes them behind that journey. I think with many high-tech uh, cases, the focus is on the technology itself, so it's really refreshing to find a case that looks behind the scenes at the manufacturing process and the logistics behind the, the creation of the product. It's, it's, it's terrific. Um, what is it about this particular scenario that attracted your attention? Well, you know, it's, uh, it's great to be able to compare and contrast what uh, Apple does with other large corporations. So you know, the example that I use in my own class is that I compare Apple strategy, which is one of product innovation, uh, to Walmart. And Walmart is a large retailer with its uh, strategy of everyday low prices. Uh, you know, it was a completely different strategy, but both companies have been very successful in terms of the way that they manage their supply chain. So it really is an opportunity for me to kind of uh, peek behind the curtain in terms of uh, what these two large companies do in terms of uh, you know, developing their supply chain strategy, how it's evolved over the years and how it's contributed to the organizational success of both companies. Yeah, so what I do is I teach the Walmart case uh, and then I immediately follow that with a uh, a class that's focused on teaching the Apple case. And then we then we compare and contrast the way the two organizations operate their supply chains. Um, now, the case is published, uh, is, is based on published sources. Um, yes. Why did you choose that approach? And, and does it bring any advantages? Yeah, it brings certain advantages. It, it you know, creates certain challenges in terms of writing the case because you've got to do a lot of investigation and be able to validate and back up the data that's in the case. Uh, but you know, because of Apple's size and prominence, uh, there's a lot of reporting that goes on with it. Uh, but what it does, it allows you to take a look at the overall strategy of the, the company uh, to back it up with data from financial reports, for example, and analyst reports. Uh, to be able to link the uh, success that the company's had in terms of their product sales, the challenges that it represents, and I can talk about one of those in a minute if you want, uh, and you know how Tim Cook as a CEO is kind of navigating the, uh, the global waters uh, of Apple's supply chain. Well, you know, if you take a look at uh, Apple's uh, uh, product strategy, they introduce a new iPhone every year and uh, usually in the fall and about September. And you know, so when, the, uh, when they launch the product, they literally have to have uh, tens of millions of product available on the launch date because there's huge demand. So every year they go through a cycle of a huge spike in demand in the fall, uh, followed by slow decline. Uh, and while the sales process is going on, they're working closely with their suppliers and their engineering group to be able to develop the next generation of product. So rather than launch a product uh, and kind of write it out for uh, four or five years, every year Apple introduces a new product that's completely redesigned, in some cases with new suppliers, 
uh, which creates a lot of uh, challenges in terms of purchasing and logistical operations. A, a bit like a teacher having a new product every year with a new intake of students. So, uh, right. <laughs> so how does the case play with students in the classroom? Could uh, does it work better with one uh, one uh, level of student than another? I've used it uh, in undergrad uh, uh, and MBA programs. Uh, works equally well. Uh, you know, what, usually the way that I start uh, the case off is I, I ask the students who has an Apple product. And you've got uh, what I call Apple enthusiasts, and then you've got people that, uh, you know, prefer other brands. And, you know, it creates a, a great debate about, uh, you know, why gravitate towards one product versus another? And what does the a Apple ecosystem look like? Uh, because, uh, you know, the case focuses on the development distribution of the iPhone, but there's a lot of other things that's going on with Apple in terms of their, their uh, uh, movement towards uh, providing greater services, for example, the proliferation of the products that they've had over the years. And, you know, it allows us to talk about, you know, what is the company's strategy and how does that filter down into their supply chain strategy? And, you know, I hate to say it, but, uh, you know, for even students in class that haven't really gone through the case in great detail, there's still lots of things for them to talk about. I can see why it's so popular. It's just a terrifically rich case. Um, a thoroughly well-deserved uh, winner of our award. And uh, congratulations again, Fraser. Um, I look forward to, uh, to seeing more cases um, from you top the list. And perhaps we could close just by seeing the award itself. Oh, that's terrific. Congratulations. Okay. Thank you very much, Richard. It's a pleasure talking with you. It's a pleasure talking to you.